So thanks for joining. We have a, a small group, so feel for, as we go through this, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Also, if there are any questions afterwards, feel free to grab me. Um, I will be around. But basically, we wanted to dive in and talk a little bit about the state of quantum, the economy of quantum, and some of the shifts. Uh, just given that we have 15 minutes, we did shorten it down from the five shifts to three. The full report has all of the information. And so if we go, and go ahead and dive in. Um, do we have the deck ready? Basically, what we wanted to talk about, number one, you know, we've talked about the, the quantum winner. I think a lot of the information in 2023 was that we did have a significant decline. We'll jump into that and talk through it. We'll also talk about some of the shifts in funding, some of the shifts in talent, and where we're really seeing innovation grow. So when we look at this, we did see a, there we go. We did see a reduction in investment in 2023. And it was pretty significant, 27%. That's affected a lot of companies because the quantum space is still very heavily reliant on private and public funding. The good news is that, oh, I don't know where this is going. The good news is that there was actually a much broader reduction in all other areas of investment, almost 38% across the board. So that means that there is more investor uh, confidence in this space than in many other areas. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that all of the startups can weather this, but it does mean that the money is going to fewer, more likely to be successful companies that are now consolidating and you know, essentially making the space a little bit more mature and ready for growth as we go. We're also seeing now, and this is a big, big thing, um, especially with uh, 2024, we are seeing a big shift to public funding as a major driver of this. If we look at where this funding is coming from, Australia uh, is not on here because this is looking at you know, the full 2023 numbers, but we will actually see 2024 an even faster increase in this as states, Australia, Finland, all of these countries are actually driving a huge amount of country level investment. This is also becoming a priority um, at the presidential federal level for places like France, uh, the UK, NATO, everybody's making big pushes around here because they see this as a major pillar of future technology, particularly around national defense and security. Now, I'll caveat some of these numbers. The China number has been an investment that was as I said uh, quite a few years ago. We don't know how quickly this money is being deployed or exactly to where. And as a result, these numbers are not 100% comparable, but they at least give a sense of where are we seeing the funding and where are we seeing new big amounts of funding itself. Similarly, Germany as well, you know, we've had a few different announcements of major bouts of funding. These are new groups of funding, but it's not clear how much of the money has been spent previously. Again, I think it's very helpful to at least know the general amounts. In the next quantum monitor, we're gonna also be including things like state level funding. That's a place where in 2024, we've seen a big increase uh, as well. Not only the federal government, but states are actually now investing in their local economies and focusing on quantum as a major pillar of job growth. As we go forward also, we're seeing a consolidation of where the innovation is happening. It used to be that the top 10 uh, countries had 77%. You'd expect as we mature, this maybe spreads out to other areas, but we've actually seen the opposite. All the patents, the papers that are coming out are now coming out from a smaller set of countries, a smaller set of hubs. And so you really see, are seeing this geographic consolidation into a few smaller areas that are becoming leaders in innovation across the board. As we take a look now where the funding is going and where we see the future, right now most of the funding is going towards the hardware manufacturers. We're still building the quantum computers. This makes sense. There's a lot of push on this area to get that right before we get the rest of it going. There are small amounts of funding going into algorithm development, um, into other pieces of the application software suite, services, and so on. What we do expect is that in the near future, once the hardware becomes uh, more mature, and I think we're getting very close to switching towards that hardware-ready epoch stage, we will actually see more funding shifting towards the hardware manufacturers capturing the value, and then shortly thereafter, we're gonna see a lot more moving more towards the applications and services, where we're seeing development of algorithms, of applications and capabilities. And that's gonna be a big piece because we do see that there is a very limited funnel of talent, of capabilities. So it'll be a few players helping out a lot of the other uh, people involved in the uh, quantum space versus just a very broad set of people developing this ground up. As we take a look at the market sizing, 
quantum computing is the big beast. It's the thing where we are going to see the most value. It's where we're going to see the most revenue and the most growth over the years. This will scale up really quickly as we get to higher levels of maturity because there is a pent up demand for this, particularly with the increase in computing needs from Gen AI. Any place where uh, quantum can take the load off of other areas, we're going to see a big push and a big uh, and rapid increase in the, uh, in the growth there. Quantum communication as well, particularly driven by secure communications. That will be another area that's going to have rapid growth. And the last one is quantum sensing. We've had a lot of discussions on this one on whether this is being a little bit conservative or not. If you guys think it is conservative, please talk to me. I'm happy to discuss. We do think that there is opportunity here, but we think that the uptake on some of this, just given uh, timelines for adoption, costs of the actual sensing tools, it will be very niche and have a slow uptake, but it will be driving value, even though it is in some ways the most mature area of all three of these at this point. If we take a look at where do we see the most value, um, we are seeing major growth. There's almost uh, two trillion of industry value. Now this, this isn't revenue, this is value for the organizations that are consuming the actual products themselves. Some people may say like, my God, this is like a massive number. Well, for quantum computing, it's like going from mail to email in terms of driving down cost of some of these topics. And so we see places like finance particularly, huge amounts of value there for organizations that are trying to do multivariate portfolio analysis. Similarly for R&D, we are already seeing companies, large companies in the pharma space that we've worked with looking at how do we improve our R&D portfolio? How do we improve our trial selection processes, our patient selection? And this is a place where quantum is perfectly positioned to help figure that out. For chemistry um, and pharmaceuticals, there's also a component of material design, of drug design that this can help with as well. And automotive is really looking at transport logistics and things like vision uh, and AI to help with self-driving cars as well as figuring out optimal routes across the board. So we do see a huge amount of value here across all of these areas. Um, one, uh, one area that I think is particularly interesting is just sustainable energy. That's one area where we're seeing a quick increase because there, haven't, there isn't as much legacy technology there. We do expect that some of the quantum uptake will be much higher than in other areas in the near term. One big thing that we see, um, the number, the amount of talent that we have right now, way too low. And it's not really gonna catch up. Even by 2030, we're still gonna have a pretty big gap. And by the way, I think the number of people that we need is gonna be far, far larger than this. Uh, there's, this gap will continue and I think it'll actually get worse, but these are the current projections that we have now. What this leads to is there's probably gonna be a few places that are driving a lot of the innovation. And that's why we're seeing this consolidation across uh, geographic hubs. There's probably about 30 or 40 across the world that are really starting to set themselves up. And every one of them is figuring out what combination they have of particular technologies that they're focusing on, skill sets, startups, and industry partners, as well as governments that are supporting and enabling them in terms of funding. There's a few that are really accelerating now. Most of them are still trying to find their their way, but you know, places like University of Maryland has really have really done a great job in setting up full ecosystems and bringing in partners, bringing up startups, setting up physical space for people to learn. And we're really seeing this as a as really the hub of innovation. The reason why that is, quantum computers are still expensive. The talent is really uh, not as available, and so bringing all of this together, where you can have industry partners come in test the technology with some of the latest capabilities, people know that know what they're doing. It really has created uh, centers for innovation and growth and really adoption itself. So we're really excited to see all of these you know, organizations kind of bringing this in. There are new ones popping up on a regular basis and we're continually happy to help e each of these organizations figure out how to bring in industry partners, how to develop their roadmaps, how to figure out what the strategy is for each one. Um, but really it's important that they all find their niche and find which area in the quantum economy they're really focusing on. If you guys have any other questions, you know, you have the quantum monitor here. Um, I'll open it up for a quick discussion. We have a few minutes. I really just want to give an overview. Please feel free to download it. We're about to start working on the quantum 2025 monitor as well. So we'd love to get feedback on this and see what else that you really want. But would love any quick questions from the group as we go. Yeah. $100 to your personal money, you're rich. You have to invest it into the stock market tonight before it closes. 
how much of it would you put into quantum stocks, assuming there's plenty? I'm not asking about the stocks that are. So, yeah. so I, I would say there's still a little bit of rebalancing that has to happen. I would say I would go into, I would say 60%-ish, because I do think that there's a huge amount of value there. Um, but I think it would be into the players that have more sustainable, uh, better platforms versus some of the ones that are still very much investigating at this point. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, no questions? Well, I think uh, Ryan is ready uh, if there are no other questions. Perfect. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys it. really appreciate Good it. Good McKinsey.